This is the new patient? Yeah, so he's a fit guy, minimal medical problems. He and his wife both tested positive for coronavirus, and uh, he was admitted late last night. He was on about two... On Friday, February 27th, my partner called me to let me know that one of the patients we had here in our intensive care unit was tested for the coronavirus and turned positive. At the time, I was home with my family, and I remember feeling my heart thump when I heard those results. Yes, this is what we've been prepared for and ready for, but now it's here, not just on our shores, but in our intensive care unit in our community. Was he on an ACE inhibitor, did you notice? I don't believe so, but I'd have to check and verify. Yeah, I'll look. Here at Evergreen Hospital, we've had, and I still believe now have, the largest cohort of critically ill coronavirus patients in the United States. The way this started was earlier in the week, several of our ICU physicians had started to get suspicious that we were dealing with a condition that was different than what we were used to. We're used to seeing certain patient patterns, but these patients weren't getting better and we weren't able to identify what was causing their illness, so we started to get very suspicious. So immediately, we started to put them on appropriate isolation while we got testing, and we were one of the first here in the Puget Sound to identify a coronavirus-infected patient. Uh, he looks great. He looks awesome. Yeah. I'm so excited. I know. This is like... Feels good. I'm so... One of the key things that we did early was that we had single physician um, teams that were managing these patients, so we were able to start to see clinical trends coming out of this large cohort of patients. We then took that information and shared it not only with the other ICU medical directors in the Puget Sound, but teamed with the CDC on phone calls with other ICU clinicians throughout the nation to share what we've learned Extreme and shared what flow. we've seen. And he's been sitting at 40% and 30 liters high flow. His voice is getting stronger, he feels stronger, he was communicating, he got to speak with his wife. I love it. Yeah, and then Lucy was... So here at Evergreen Health, uh, we use various types of personal protective equipment. That includes N95 masks, simple masks, gowns and gloves, as well as papper and cappers. So one of the things that we do um, is that she can see it from the inside, but uh, we look at each other to identify that indeed it's active and she's got airflow. If it's not active, you would see a red light here. It initially was red and changed to green. And Tammy, you can see the green on the inside? Yes. And then finally, we clean our hands and put on gloves. And then all of the doors here are closed, so uh, she's now ready to go into her room. What has been incredibly successful here is instead of having just single rooms, which is the normal to, for airborne precautions, we've actually converted entire floors and units. So the entire floor, all 20 beds of our ICU, are able to take an airborne precaution patient. That's because our engineering was ready. We knew which floors we could do this on, and so it was an easy transition as opposed to a scramble of where these patients could go. And then finally, testing. Here at Evergreen Health, we are now testing for the coronavirus, and the key is that we can get immediate testing with a turnaround of a result within a matter of hours. That is a game changer. Some of the other things we hadn't anticipated was how to manage some of our end of life pathways that are so well built, but not when you have to eliminate visitors from being at the bedside. So for example, we had a patient's family that felt it was very important to have last rites performed by a priest, we had to figure out how to bring a priest in, including his Bible and his holy water, in order to do what was important, but maintaining his safety, as well as the safety of his congregation after he's left our unit. So the community can be part of helping the healthcare systems by flattening the curve, meaning slow down the spread of this virus, 
keep it from getting to our parents and our grandparents and other populations that are most vulnerable. So wash your hands, stay home. If you are sick, don't go hang out with your grandparents. Keep the people you love protected by making good decisions at home.